Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. Hi friends, I was just reading a line by Rabindranath Tagore. No matter how much British poetry, American poetry we read, but still when it comes to Indian literature, we feel a bit different because we are now going to talk about our country. So in this video lecture, I shall be talking about few really famous Indian poets and few important Indian poetries which you should not skip if you are preparing for UDC Net English. There are a lot of Indian writers which I would not be able to complete in this video. So you can go to my website arpitakarva.com and under the section of online course content, you will get a list of Indian writers which is the module 5 of my online audio course. You can get the list of writers and start preparing all those writers if you will be sitting for the next UGC NET exam. The first writer that we are going to talk about is Toru Dutt. Toru Dutt lived in England for a long period of time. Though she was born in India, she was an Indian. But then she went to England and she lived there for a considerable amount of time. She died at a very young age, but still she was able to create a mark in the pages of history. We find that she was quite attached to her country so much so that she started learning Sanskrit when she was in England and there she translated Ramayan, Mahabharat and other Indian epics. Together all these translations were published in a volume called Ballads and Legends of Hindustan and Edmund Goose wrote an introduction of this particular collection. This is a very important information related to the life of Torudat. Apart from it you will be shocked to know that Torudat's father was also a very learned man and he was a great admirer of Wordsworth. And that is the reason why you will find allusions of Wordsworth in a lot of Torudat's poetry. One of the most famous poem written by Torudat is Kajarina Tree and this was asked in November 2017 that Kajarina Tree is a poem by and the correct answer is Torudat. So we find that Kajarina Tree ke andar a lot of references of Wordsworth can be seen, can be traced and not only Wordsworth's reference but you will see that it is quite similar to the way Wordsworth used to write. So allusions from the poems of Wordsworth are taken in account when Kajarina Tree was written by Torudat. The next writer that I am going to talk about is A.K. Ramanujan. A.K. Ramanujan is a man who not only knew Hindi. English but he also knew Tamil and Kannad so like he was well versed in all these four languages and he was quite influenced by Shelley and W.B. Yeats so W.B. Yeats and Shelley's poetry had a lot of influence in the works of A.K. Ramanujan. Apart from this what is interesting to know when it comes to A.K. Ramanujan is that he was quite influenced by the Tamil Sangam tradition. There is a beautiful tradition followed by Tamilians which is called Agam and Puram. Agam means inner and Puram means outer. So inner world and outer world don't know kaise amalgamate hote hai and how they influence each other is what is denoted in the Sangam tradition. Sangam means when two things come together in dissolves into one another. So he was quite influenced by Sangam tradition. Apart from that one interesting thing that I would like you to note is that he has written a fabulous essay called Is There an Indian Way of Thinking? It's a beautiful essay in which he has talked about how Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy, Indian ideas and the ideas from the West, both of them has influenced his childhood and he has talked about his childhood experiences when he saw that his father was well versed in English, he was such a literate man, he was a scholar but still he used to wear turban and dhoti. So he's saying that you know though we educate, we receive formal education and we grow up in a western environment still if we are Indian by heart we'll become a very very influential personality. So he's saying that his discipline and education has given his outer form, his outer appearance is influenced by his foreign education whereas he is influenced by the Indian way of thinking and that is what resides inside his heart. So outwardly if you look at his personality you might see him as a westernized person but inside he's still an Indian. 
When it comes to A.K. Ramanujan, you should also remember that he has translated You Are Anant Muti Samskara. Samskara is a very very important text and you must read it if you are preparing for UGC net. It's a fabulous work talking about the caste system of India and this work was translated by A.K. Ramanujan. Apart from that, if you look at the poems written by A.K. Ramanujan, you'll see that family is a very very important theme. In all his poems, love poem, for wife one and small scale reflection in all these poems he's talking about large extended indian family okay so the depiction of families in um, the movies of suraj barjatiya rashtri production the same kind of family structure is talked about by ak ramanujan also in his works apart from that one important thing that i would like to mention here is that if you look at his most celebrated poem small scale reflection you'll see that he is also talking about the post colonial Theme. Basically, in this poem, he is talking about how the Western people take things from the East, and he is also talking about how Indian handloom industry is being destroyed by Britishers. So, all these small tits and bits, if you combine them together, you will see that the poem is also a fantastic piece of post-colonial literature. The next poet is Nazim Azikil. He has written this fabulous essay called. poet lover and bird watcher and in this particular essay he is trying to define poetry and comparing poetry with the experience of a lover and bird watcher we'll look at this complex theory but before that i would like to mention that william shakespeare has also mentioned and compared poet lover and lunatic together in his play called midsummer's night's dream so in the play written by william shakespeare he compares all the three together he says that the state the emotional condition of a lunatic a lover and a poet is same similarly in the essay nizi mazikil says that just like a lover cannot force his beloved to love neither can a bird watcher force his pace because then the bird will fly similarly a poet cannot force uh, himself to write he cannot compel himself to write and that is where he says a beautiful statement that best poet wait for words best poets are the ones who wait for words so this is a beautiful statement by nazim azikil and you can see what kind of image he has about a poet when he's talking and comparing a poet with a bird watcher and a lover so he believes in the idea that poetry should flow just like wordsworth say that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of emotion similarly nazim azikil says that the poetry should flow from your heart you cannot compel yourself to write wait for the words and words will come to you If you look at the works of Nazim Azikil you'll see that all his poems are talking about ordinary common experiences that we all go through and the most important thing about his poems are that they talk about human relationship but just like Robert Frost they are also talking about some complex philosophical truths in Robert Frost poem we'll see that the poems talk about nature but inside the deeper layers you will see some philosophical idea residing similarly in the works of uh, nazim azikil you will see that he is not only talking about the common place scenario about human relationships but he is also talking about philosophical ideas you can see that in his most celebrated work night of the scorpion in which superstition is pitted against scientific temperament so this was a short overview of nazim azikil before i end this lecture i would like to mention one important thing which was also a question in ugc net exam june 2012 the question was that who has written the essay naipaul's india and mine and the correct answer is nazim azikil so you should remember that azikil has written a fabulous essay called naipaul's india and mine if you are wondering who is naipaul i am pretty sure that you must have heard of the great writer v s naipaul so he's talking about naipaul's views and he's mixing his own views and presenting a holistic picture of india in the essay naipaul's india and mine 
So with that note, I end my video lecture. I hope I was able to create your interest in Indian literature. Indian literature is filled with great writers. I've already made a video on Indian literature. You can go and watch that video which talks about few important works of Indian literature which you should not miss if you are preparing for UGC net. Apart from that, I've also started a new paper one series in which I am talking about different topics of paper one and I'm guiding students about how they can channelize their preparation for paper one. So this is a video lecture series which is run on my YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, then do it now because you will be notified every time when I post a video on YouTube. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you receive the notification on the phone itself. Apart from that, you can also follow me on all the social media platform because I'm running a a GoNet quiz specifically for English literature students. There are a lot of fact files and a lot of puzzles and quizzes which are going in in my social media pages. So if you like those pages, then you will be notified whenever I post a quiz or an important update. So with that note, I end my video. We'll meet in the next video lecture till the time we meet next. Happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarwar.com.